Art is too important not to share. Welcome to the Allie and Callie Artcast. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie, and we're with the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Cultural Alliance. Hello, Allie. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm starting to feel much better. I mean, I'm actually feeling much better. I still you have sound that. better, though. Yeah, I still feel like I got that smoke. I know, voice. I know. The Brenda but, Vaccaro. Yeah, that right. That dates me. People are like, who's, <laughs> who's Brenda <that>? Vaccaro? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Bacall. But, uh-huh. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. Coming back from Portugal, Kevin got covid And then, of course, he gave it to me. And then, of course, I passed it on to Connor, who picked us up from the airport and hung out with us one night when we got back. I know. And it's a lingerer. It's not like, I mean, well, I had the virus before COVID. Because, again, you know, I've had COVID four times. Yes, I know. You are the COVID queen. I am a a human spreader. (laughs) (laughs) So stay away from me. No, I feel like, how can I get it again? I but it loves me. It's just like, oh, oh, yeah. We need this new, new strain. Give it to me. Yeah, give it to Callie. Callie's got to test it out before anybody else. <laughs> and gets I'm gonna it. say it wasn't that bad. My cold was worse than my COVID. Yeah, because that lasted for. A yeah, month. I gotta say it was not bad. The the thing, yeah. the worst part was missing everything. Yeah, because I wasn't allowed to yeah, go. Yeah, you're like, oh, remember when yeah. we just used to have colds and you just went. Like Janie, she said, Allie, don't come around me because... I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii and I, I don't want to be sick. I know. And Janie's Abby, sitting in as our producer today because yes. Kristen Hi, got Janie. a new job. Hi, I Janie. Know. She's waving. She I doesn't know. have a mic on. Yeah. But yeah, I know. It's hard. It's it's torture when you can't go places because... Yeah. Well, and you don't want to give it to somebody because who knows right. anyone's reaction. On the other hand, I got a nice rest from my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time change. You I know, adjusted. I know. I got all adjusted. <laughs> Portugal, by the way, was loved amazing. It. I loved all the pictures. Oh, it's it was funny. Really it's fun. Portugal was not on my list, but it might have to be on my list. Oh, I think it should be on your list. I have so many lists now, yeah. but I need to, I guess, play the lottery so I can afford to go to all these places. Right, right. I know, yeah, but. Well. You know. Or we need to get good sponsors so we can take so we can do Allie, Allie and Callie, Callie on, on the road. road. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's so what we I hear you went to see Elf last night. I did Elf. Um, let me say Elf it the right way. The jun- Elf the Musical, Musical Junior. Junior with the CDA Act Theater. And it was so sweet. And I we interviewed them the last podcast. And mm-hmm. um, they're just delightful. I just can't even tell you. And... Uh, I know it was like, what, two couple days after Halloween, and I was like, oh, there's a Christmas tree, and I applauded, and I was like, <laughs> I wasn't, I thought I wasn't ready, but I was, I was like, okay, this is okay, it's yeah. okay, and they're so, they're just so sweet, mm-hmm. they work so hard, and boy, some of them have some of the best comic timing, oh, that I, love I it. just, Logan is hilarious, and the girl playing the his little romantic lead she's got some great comic timing i just love it it's oh, fun cool. to watch them just and then you've seen some of the other actors i mean most of them have all been in a lot of the other yeah. shows and they're just they're just shining and you can just see the pure joy on stage mm-hmm. and the audience is so supportive and so gosh we need to see them more they mm-hmm. only can produce one show a year right now mm-hmm. so we need to fund them we need big grants for them or yeah. something or the community needs to step it up right because that it's we have a huge population of special needs adults and younger children that mm-hmm. that want to perform and want to be a part of society yeah. and be a part of something yeah but they have special needs and they take a little more it takes a little bit more to get them out there right but they do such a great job and Jamie Shario uh the president of the board and the director and just the whole company that works with them uh, I'm just a uh, standing uh, standing ovation. I'm Yay. giving Yay. Well, I job. loved editing the podcast cuz I was allowed to do that. <laughs> yes, you could do that. You couldn't be there in person. I couldn't be there, but I listened and oh my god, Buddy, the <laughs> character or the guy that plays Buddy, Logan. 
Logan. Oh, Logan Basta. I laughed through his whole. He was really funny. He's hilarious. I can't wait to go. I'm going to see it on Sunday. Yeah, and so. and I saw opening. So and they're only here uh, November second through the fifth. So mm-hmm. it's one weekend only because the croc is so full. Right. I mean, good God, we need another performance space once again. Yes. There's not enough places to perform. Right. Uh, you know, as a performer myself, I'm like, whew, where do you go? There aren't a lot yeah. of places, so right. we just need more money, more places. We always need more money. More money. Everybody more money. needs gimme, more money. Gimme, gimme, gimme. More, more, yeah, right. Gimme, gimme. In the world. Well, I'm really looking forward to today because we have Rod Rada here. Yes. He is from Architects West. He's mm-hmm. an architect there. Recently, um, he's moved here recently. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's right. He's been all over the place, and I'm really excited to find out more about him. He's he also, is on our board. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I was just going to so, say, and he was We've got to know him a little bit. He was a part of our Kids Draw Architecture. Yes, he was. So we want to hear about that. But we right. want to hear more about Rod, and tell us tell us all about you, Rod. Yeah, okay. and thanks okay. for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm originally from uh, Chilean Patagonia. Mm-hmm. Um, I um, grew up there, and... I left Chile when I was 19. I did my Bachelor's of Architectural Studies in Cape Town, South Africa. And then I moved to um, London in the UK, where I finished my Master's in Architecture, Mm -hmm. where I met my uh, wife, Vanessa, who's from Arizona. So Mm -hmm. I ended up in Arizona after London. Uh And uh, that was my first introduction to the US, um, Phoenix, Arizona. And um, after being there for about 10 years or so, we uh, moved up here to the area in 2018. Okay. Okay. And uh, moved to Coeur d'Alene uh, a couple of years ago. We were, we were in the Spokane area. And yeah, I'm an architect. I, I, I graduated from the Architectural School of Association in London. Um, and, and, and the rest you just heard. Mm. And I, for me, architecture is my life. I, I love it. It's something that I do when I'm sleeping. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm, it's, uh, and, and I brought a quote I mentioned to you guys earlier, but uh, I brought a quote here from Frank Lloyd Wright, obviously a famous architect, and mm-hmm. he said, um, the mother art is architecture. Um, mm. Without an architecture of our own, we have no soul of our own civilization. Ooh, Ooh that's so good. So it's pretty deep. Uh, yeah, and, and, I like that. Though. Yeah, my... Um, I, I do wanted to be an artist when I was in school. I was always very artistic. Um, I'm more of a, you know, architecture has, has many, many uh, tentacles. After you graduate, you go into technical aspect or management or um, code related things. And you have designers who, mm-hmm. you know, make buildings look good or bad. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, for me, for me, I've always leaned to the design side of architecture mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, it's where, it's where I express myself through, through, um, through buildings. Um, so when, when, when I wanted to be an artist as a, as, as a child, my, my parents said, well, you know, I don't know how much money you're going to make. <laughs> yeah. What else do you like? But, Tell us what yeah, else you're interested that's in. That's right. <laughs> uh, and so they, they kind of, uh, although I always liked architecture, um, uh, you know, I guess there's there's some artists that make way more money than architects do. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it's just a narrow-minded vision of my parents. But however, (laughs) um, they they gear me towards architecture. And um, yeah, I I love studying it and I love love doing it. Mm. Is your family still in South America? My parents are. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At some point we were all, we're we're four siblings. So Mm -hmm. I have two older, one older brother, a younger brother and a younger Young, my youngest siblings is my sister. Mm-hmm. Um, she she lives in Italy right now, but she's based out of Melbourne in Australia. Oh, okay. Uh, my my younger brother used to live in Vancouver, Canada. He was a river rafter. He studied there ecotourism. Mm-hmm. And my older brother, he lived in France. He used to be a diplomat, but now he is in back in Chile. Oh wow! We might have two. You guys were just global. Yeah, at some yeah. point, Family. at some point, we were just spread out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad, we moved to South Africa because my dad was a diplomat, so we we were end up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quisiera practicar español contigo. Muy bien. 
Mm. Vamos. <laughs> wow. I, I'm, wow. <laughs> I said I would like to practice Spanish with you. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah. Okay. I took French, so many, many, many moons I've been, ago. I really want Darn to it. learn to yeah. speak Spanish yeah. so much better. I, yeah, I don't get, I don't, I don't get to, uh, I, only on the weekends when I call my parents. That's mm -hmm. the only time I really, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I been a bad teacher to my kids I'm, I'm you? you know I have two yeah. kids nine and five mm -hmm. and um yeah I should be better <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah because oh my god I I understand that learning a language when you're young you just the kids just kind of soak it up and they really get it yeah, so yeah my my wife she her mom is from Chile um, oh, so there was a point of um, uh, point of connection there. Mm -hmm. So we she she speaks Spanish. So we mm -hmm. speak Spanish to one another when our kids when we don't want our kids to understand. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so perfect. it's a great tool. Yeah, right. right. That's why, that's I love why it. I haven't taught him. Yeah, right. Otherwise, I'll, you know. Okay, I get that. <laughs> that makes sense. On the down. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, that's right. great. Uh, but I think they they they've. Um, you know, just by hearing us, I think phonetically they, they picked up a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. just by having it around, I think it helps them. But I should be better. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and you know, like you guys mentioned, I've been I've been in the board. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my first year in the board. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm really excited. I love art. Um, I, I, like I mentioned, I've always been very artistic. I, there's things I do on the side for myself. Uh, I'm very hands-on, and uh, I do do um, some furniture. Mm -hmm. um, um, I do. It, it's more of an applied art for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. But I, I used to be into, uh, particularly during school, um, classical art. Uh, so I, you know, it's. I always feel like I should. I should go back to it, uh, mm -hmm. and I think it's a. It's a point of inspiration, and mm -hmm. uh, it's just. It's just free. It's right. just so much freedom. Yeah. Uh, Architecture is, is so uh, rigid and constricted at times that mm -hmm. so driven by budgets and clients' expectations and things that uh, sure you know uh, also you know regulations and what you can do you can't just you know mm -hmm. you right know, once you get to be an, a star architect which I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want but unfortunately a yeah. star architect I love yeah, that that's right <laughs> oh my god I'm stealing that with oh, I know anything. that's really right. cute a yeah. stactress I get that cause yeah. as a graphic designer I have to please my clients but I right. think you know the whole it, they come to you because they want that design right and uh, and I think having a background in design and and that creative expression is mm -hmm. so important. Right, right. It's very um, it, it's in the in the realm of feelings. Um, I would say the you know for me for me space is a it's almost a a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk into a room uh, and it's one of those things that you know you you can you can smell you can taste you can touch you can see. But scale is, is is something that it's also for me a sense that you walk into a room and and you can feel the scale. You can feel oppressed, or you can mm -hmm. feel liberated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can feel compressed or emancipated. I mean, there's there's so many different ways that the moment you walk into a space, uh, how that space is um, shaped, mm -hmm. uh, it, it 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 gives you a sense of uh, feeling. Uh, so f from that aspect, and then there's there's the visual aspect of buildings, and how they relate and how they contribute to the built environment or the urban fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 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 that. So there, there's just so many layers in which you can approach architecture from from a a a, a sense of um, within uh, that I think it relates a lot to to art. Mm -hmm. um, however, like you said. Uh, you you have clients, um, and then you you have to uh, find yourself in their need. Right. Uh, so this uh, it's when I studied architecture, it was um, my one of my favorite times in life. I was free to solve the world problems and design whatever I wanted to design, mm -hmm. and it was just a such a fantastic experience to study architecture. But then you come out of that, and then you realize that well, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little different <laughs> in the real world, and right. and 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 then in the beginning it was all about your ideas, uh, studying architecture, and then when you come outside uh, school, 
uh, you realize that you have to find your ideas in in what your clients need, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that um, being able to do that, I think it's it's it it's been a success, mm-hmm. um, in, at least in my experience. Um, so so it's 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 very difficult to to put that aside though, because you know it's it's very ego driven in the beginning. You know, it's all right. about it's all about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not as in you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, are you designing more um, commercially or? Um, What's the word I want? Homes? Just uh, yeah, typology. Uh, what what yeah. kind of typology? Residential. Yeah, yeah residential. Yeah. yeah, what market are you uh, designing? Well, at Architects West, we, you know, uh, it's uh, historically has been schools for mm-hmm. the, for the you know, bigger part of the 50 year. We just turned 50. That's uh, right. Mm-hmm. That's right. We, we, had, we had a good party. Yes. Uh, yes. Some, yes, know, we got to go. Was that fun. was really fun. <laughs> we crashed that party. Yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> and, but, you know, for the for the first 40, I guess, um, and, and, you know, I've only been with Access West for about two years, so this mm-hmm. is something that I am reiterating from, from uh, mm-hmm. some of my bosses and colleagues. But mm-hmm. uh, the, our DNA has been schools, but over the past decade or so, we've... Um, uh, diversified into all sorts of other different markets. Mm-hmm. We are we are doing residential. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. um, we have some developments, residential developments. We we do a lot of uh, commercial and um, civic uh, fire stations and mm-hmm. uh, public safety stuff. And we we also do some manufacturing things. Um, so a little bit of a little bit of everything. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, our school work is is slower than than what it has been historically, but we were expecting it to ramp up at some point. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, with the population growing here, I'm sure. Oh yeah, we're going to sure. need some schools here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Hey y'all, it's Jason from Tubbs Coffee Roasters. We are North Idaho's specialty coffee roaster. We are homegrown and we are local. We love coffee and we love our community, especially Allie and Callie in ArtCast. We have a retail space in our roastery in Hayden, and we can also be found on the shelves at Super One and Yolks. And if you like to buy coffee online, we do offer subscriptions. You can find us at TubbsCoffeeRoasters.com. Support arts and culture and your local roaster. That's all. So Kids Draw Architecture is a program of the Arts and Culture Alliance, and we definitely got you right into that whole program. Right. And you want to talk about your experience with that? Yeah, it's been my second year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the the first year I was I was assisting more than, uh, and then now this 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 last time I was a little more more of a protagonist on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, Abby. Was, mm-hmm. was was running the show and um it's it's great i love it i mean it it takes me back again to school um it's all about you know what you see and, and what you put on paper mm-hmm. um you know again as buildings as 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 art or as culture uh for me they are an expression of it um so seeing kids uh, look at buildings and and then seeing what they draw on paper mm-hmm. is always exciting. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. what they focus on and or, or or how they try to represent what they see. We do a little a, a little introduction on how to draw perspective. Uh, uh, you know, depending depending on the level of um, skill or or how old they are, mm-hmm. they 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 respond. Uh, differently to perspective, mm-hmm. uh, which is an is an interesting uh, is an interesting tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we do that introduction in the beginning, and then and then we go outside and we lose, we choose different locations, and 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 we just let them loose and see see what they come up with. We help them along the way, mm-hmm. um, how to how to see things and how to draw them, like how to use a pencil for scale, how to put it on the paper, um, depth and things like that. And mm-hmm. at some point, kids they just focus on a detail. Or or they just start drawing cartoons, <laughs> you right? Know? So, yeah, you know. so we try we try <laughs> we try to keep the level of attention, uh, um, but you know, at some point, uh, they're gonna, kids are going to do what they want to do. So That's right. um, you know, we have a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we don't try to make it heavy. We try to make it light and exciting. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, we meet at the um, at the building there, the human uh, human rights, rights building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we just go around around the park, 
and then we go into the neighborhoods and, and pick mm-hmm. some old, old buildings. And I think this year you guys partnered with the museum to um, just to uh, mm-hmm. introduce a little more cultural right. uh, aspects and historical aspects. Yeah, to yeah. We, uh, and they, they allow us to go into the chapel there mm-hmm. in the, um, I can't recall the... The, the, the little, sure, red little red church. Yeah, Sherman, the, by the, Sherman, yeah, by NIC Sherman, there. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Chapel. But I learned yeah, a lot. I, I mean, I didn't know it was used to be part of a fort, mm-hmm. uh, Fort Sherman. Mm-hmm. Fort right? Sherman. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so we went in there, and uh, they gave us a, um, a very nice introduction about the the, the building and kids. Uh, drew inside and outside. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was pretty cool. The um, um, I think the. The interesting thing is how how kids start connecting with the city. Uh, the, mm-hmm. We 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 sat in front of a house uh, along the park, um, and then the lady came out came from the house came outside, and she was very excited to see what the kids were drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and and the house, you know, uh, I think she had lived there, f- you know, all her life, mm-hmm. uh, and the house was from like 1900s or something. Um, so it was. It was a nice moment mm-hmm. uh, to to see the kids relate to to that house, not just the building, but who lives inside, and right. you know, it creates that community bond. Which yeah, I thought it was nice. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, and we were really fortunate this year. Uh, Architects West was the sponsor of that program. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's and right. has been very supportive. Yes, of, they are. Uh, various things that the Arts and Culture Alliance does. So we certainly appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we 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 uh, appreciate the art. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we're happy that you do. <laughs> In That's the past, right. the Kids Draw Architecture Program has gone to the Cataldo Mission. We partnered with the uh, Coeur d'Alene Tribe to mm-hmm. take them to the mission and bust them there and spend a day learning about that, which was really fun. Yeah. Kevin mm-hmm. Jester, who mm-hmm. was an architect with. Um, yeah, Architects West for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, he um, yeah. designed that um, visitor center there, so okay. that was really fun to be yeah. there with him and get his perspective on that. Yeah, and Kevin used to do kids raw architecture. Mm-hmm. Yes, and and then after Kevin, it was Steve Roth who mm-hmm. uh, did it, and 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 Steve got me involved, and and now mm-hmm. now here I am, and yeah. here you are. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Passing the torch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just uh, curious, and just to go back to uh, the beginnings, um, what made you choose this profession? Why did you mm-hmm. Why did you go to architecture? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, like I mentioned earlier, I, I wanted to be an artist. Mm-hmm. And, and then um, my parents focused my talent into architecture. And um, I, in the beginning, I just saw it as a form of expression. Mm-hmm. Um, I studied uh, through my studies, which it took about six to seven years uh, mm-hmm. to go through school. It depends how you how you arrange it. You know, mm-hmm. some you know some people can get through it faster than others. And uh, how did you choose London for your? It was just serendipitous. You know, really? it was just life kind of unfolded. It was never really planned. Uh, mm-hmm. The reason. My, my my parents moved to South Africa, so I studied in Cape Town. Cape Town was English system, mm-hmm. uh, being part of the Commonwealth, and it, my whole class moved to London. Mm. Uh, so I just kind of followed what right. everybody else was doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that sounds good. Let's yeah, go there. Yeah, this, this sounds exciting. Like that. That's, That's right. a lot of history. Good buildings there. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I you know, I, I I do I do love architecture and I love the theory of it. But as as I, in the beginning, mm-hmm. it was for me, it was more as a, as a form of expressing myself. And, mm-hmm. um, it was it was always very uh, interesting to me to. Uh, view a building as uh, as an art form um, you know just you know these days it's all computerized and digitized uh, right. but right. In the, you know my first my first three or four years of architecture was just all hand drawn mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so m- m- getting involved into you know designing something you were just dealing with your media and your paper mm-hmm. right. uh, so very very similar to how you would do a painting or right so the how right. how I engaged how I engaged my drawing it was it was a point of pride mm-hmm. um, and I was very happy about it. And those are the renderings that you submit before you actually get into the technical part, right? 
Well, yeah. I mean, even the even the technical part. Some of the some of the you know just just doing a technical drawing in architecture. You have all the different pens and the. I guess it's how you know an engineer. I guess would also relate to their drawings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there there was two things. One, it was like the the the. And that's why I say architecture has all these tentacles that you can go into. Uh, for me, I was always very artistic, so I was always interested in the design aspect. Yeah. And like you said, the renderings, I would do a lot of those, just, uh, um, you know, what a building one is, is going to look like. And, mm -hmm. and I would, you know, it, it would be a painting, mm -hmm. but for for architecture, I guess. Yeah. What, what you know, what what am I thinking about? or what am Well, I wouldn't the rendering be the thing that sells the that's project? Right. That's right. Yeah. So in school, you know, it, they, you know, the first years of school, um, I, I had to do everything by hand, uh, which which made me, I guess, um, very conscious of my skill. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would I would um, do renderings to sell my concepts to my professors, I guess. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. and then um, uh, and then eventually, you know, the computers got involved, and I don't know if it's something to do with the third world. Me coming from the third world, moving into the first world, and mm -hmm. uh, at what point, you know, I'm sure in the U.S. they stopped. If I would have studied from the beginning in the U.S., I don't know if it would have been all by hand. I don't know, but uh, I'm 46 years old, so mm -hmm. uh, this was, you know, mid 90s that mm -hmm. I was studying. Um, and now renderings, to your point, yeah, they do sell. It's you know, we we design buildings to be compliant with codes and mm -hmm. everything, structure and health and safety. That's really our, our main effort. But, you know, in the end, a building, it's an emotional, um, it's an emotional reaction from clients when there's this, so well, show me what it looks like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or, or show me what's going to feel like. And mm -hmm. we, now we have a whole bunch of tools to do that uh, from virtual reality. You know, mm -hmm. we have renderings, we... We don't make models anymore, but we do have a 3D printer that now and then we 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 turn loose and make a little little model here and there. But, oh yeah, you know, models. I was married to an architect for a, a little while, and okay, um, is that why you were not married to him for <laughs> a long while? <laughs> That's a long story. Okay. That's another yeah. Podcast. It's another when we podcast. talk about her ex-husband. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I don't have as many exes as Sally, no. but I have, a, I have a few. More. Well, I technically do if you don't count the ones I didn't. Make. Right, I know there is that. <laughs> right, but um, I used to watch him uh, mm -hmm. build models. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing back right. then. Right, yeah. building those models. Yeah, spent yeah. a lot of sleepless nights building models <laughs> back yeah. in the day. Oh yeah. Well, and then you watch those movies like I can't. I can't think of the one off the top of my head where it's the the guy is taking his oh I think it was Sleepless in Seattle maybe he was taking his model uh -huh. and it got smashed no I don't think it was Sleepless in Seattle but anyway okay um, it got, got smashed. smashed on the way to the meet yeah. the client <laughs> yeah. that's right that sounds like the Brady Bunch I don't know <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sure it's been the subject of many yeah. wasn't he many. an architect he was yeah. now that you mentioned it yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Again, uh, I date myself. Yes, you do. <laughs> Hi, Allie here. Hey, do you love our art cast? Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or like us on Facebook to get notifications about some upcoming giveaways, like an official Allie and Callie mug. Our audience is growing too, and we are a great outlet for advertising. Consider being a sponsor and Callie and I will record an ad for you or help you record it yourself. Thank you for listening. So if you could build your own house, what kind of house would you build? Funny enough, I'm building my own house. Are you? Oh, <laughs> you are. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. can't imagine like a building and I can't even imagine like it would be I mean, oh, that would be fun. It's is the it's the hardest project I've ever done. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. Yeah, it's been very difficult because one, you have to please your wife. That's right. oh, that, I, number I, one. It's not. Yeah, I have I have a client. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not just me. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And then uh, and then second, there's there's so much I can afford. Uh, oh right. You know. Oh and, right. Yeah. And uh, so it's been a battle. The design was a battle 
just just because of that mm -hmm. and and two i was designing at a time where construction costs were going through the roof oh, right right and then once once i redesigned everything to uh satisfy that then interest rates were going up oh, oh, I know. you know yeah. so yeah. I, I, you know and right now we are um, four months into construction and and it's taking a lot longer than oh, I, yeah. than I, I I would have liked, and so mm -hmm. it's been a two year process. Wow, mm. so far, and I still don't have a house. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you building? It's by right next to the Ponderosa Springs Golf Course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's right there on the on the side. Oh, that's of, such a nice hill. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's called Stanley Hill. Oh yeah, I okay. Think mm -hmm. The yeah, like technical. Right. Uh, yeah area nice. Uh, nice so yeah no I'm, I'm pretty excited but it's very simple yeah mm -hmm. uh the whole the whole approach is is to um maximize or i guess yeah maximize um r return on my investment <laughs> 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 i like simple though it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of modern um mm -hmm. so it's just a rectangular floor plan uh very clean um mm -hmm. with a with a wrap roof over it and a and a, and a roof uh, and, a, and a deck on one side. It's on a hill, oh, nice. so it's a daylight basement. Uh, oh, nice! So yeah. we, we were able to take advantage of that. That's um, good. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I can't wait to see it when it's done. Yeah, you know, have have to have a, a, we'll have a big party. Yeah, have yeah. a big party. Yeah. We'll come. <laughs> Callie yeah. and I are and if, good at crashing we parties. We just I, crash I every party in town. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're building a house? We'll oh, be there. We'll be yeah. there. When's opening? <laughs> and you know, if, if you don't like something, I can always blame my clients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Apparently, you were unhappy. Right. Yeah. That was not my idea. It's great. Speaking of that, I your family... Um, I am fascinated with the fact that you are a vegan. That's right. And your wife. Yes. And your kids. And my kids, yeah. Yeah. And we homeschool, too. And you homeschool. Wow. wow. Right. I mean, she's a busy lady. That yeah. Is. Yes. That's, yeah. Because yeah. um, I tried to be a vegan for, like, yeah. I don't know, five weeks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Christmas hit and the cheese and the meat <laughs> came out. It's like, nope. That's not going to last. That's right. <laughs> yeah. For us, it's, I mean, I've been about 20 years. Wow. Yeah. I've been vegan. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things. I don't, I don't, I don't preach it. It's mm -hmm. their own. Uh, yeah. It's just a personal choice. Yeah. That, right. Uh, and uh, we, we seem to uh, be healthy and, mm -hmm. and, and happy. So. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it, it's really fascinating to me. I um, watched a show on a morning news mm -hmm. thing once and they had you know they always have the little kitchen section and they invite somebody to come and cook mm -hmm. and they had a vegan she had been raised born and raised as a vegan and okay. she was making all these recipes that were very standard recipes that you would recognize like shepherd's pie for instance mm -hmm. or um uh, you know, a regular lasagna and, mm -hmm. and, um, her version was the vegan version. And I just remember her, um, mm -hmm. making these very standard recipes, but the vegan version and having people try it and people couldn't even tell that it wasn't yeah. the meat version right. or the animal product version. Yeah. I mean, it depends, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, on who's trying it but, yeah so. <laughs> right yes i i would yeah. imagine it's that's true, true too but you know, i guess um, it's like you know people that know about wine uh, yeah they can recognize good one from and bad, bad ones oh but, yeah so. it's true that is true <laughs> yep but uh i mean we 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 cook uh we cook traditional recipes well mm -hmm. i should say my wife right traditional recipes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and she does them really well in a in a you know I think the the hardest part for us was the cultural shift mm -hmm. uh, of changing diet. So much of our culture is tied to oh yeah what we eat. Right. Uh, not only that, but just socially mm -hmm. the the it's social awkward. aspect right. of uh, not uh, you know being part of what everybody does. Uh, right. It's always hard. Uh, but you know we found we found ways to uh, to accommodate for that, and mm -hmm. uh, we. Can we're, we plug any vegan places in town? There are not many in Coeur I was going to yeah. say, yeah, are there? Unfortunately, no. I no, didn't think so. not that many. Uh, I think Cafe Carambola does a pretty good job of um, offering vegan options. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but in, in comparison to, 
you know, not to plug other cities, but right. there, there are other cities that they're known sure for their vegan, mm-hmm. you know, sure. um, and then it's, it's so fun to go and, and just... Just right. Walk from restaurant to restaurant and not have to worry. Yeah, about not have to worry. You're like, oh, yeah. And where where are those annoying guys that they go to a, go to a Can't restaurant and I, say, no. hey, is this vegan? And I was like, what do you mean? I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. You can't I know eat that. So, that was, no, the social aspect makes it tricky, and that's yeah. why I call myself now a flexitarian. Flexitarian. There yes, you go. Yeah. because I can eat what I want when I want to, yeah. <laughs> and I don't have to yeah. be awkward when I'm at yeah. somebody's house and they say, well, we're having this and I, yeah. I don't eat that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. That's all, is that omnivores, I guess, as well? Right? Um, Wouldn't that be an omnivore? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. An omnivore. An omnivore. Eat it all. Yeah. Anytime. Well, I like flexitarian better. I like flexitarian it better. It's a little nicer. A, yeah. I, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but if you anyway. could... Um, it sounds like you've been kind of all over. I mean, mm-hmm. traveling with school and mm-hmm. and just wow, going from London to Phoenix. That's a big jump. That's yeah. a big jump. And I had never I, I been, that was your first that was time my in first the... impression of the US. Wow. Uh, I'm like, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. that. that was, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, no yeah. no jab on uh, Arizona, but no, no ooh, yeah. I'm I'm not a desert person, so mm-hmm. that's too hot and right. it's just yeah. too dry and right. yeah. I mean I'm sure it's got some moments, but <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean I was twenty seven. Okay. When I moved to the US and mm-hmm. Uh, 27, yeah, and um, and I had never been to the U.S., so I had been to a lot of places, but somehow the U.S. was never really on your list. On on or you know I was just you know, didn't how happen. life unfolds. Yeah. just never. Right. I tried to, and when I was in college, but 9/11 happened, and mm. um, I couldn't yeah. come in, and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. I, mm-hmm. It was very strict at the time. Oh yeah, uh, we were really strict. We were, yeah, yeah. we were right long time. Yeah. Right. So, mm-hmm. but um, it's interesting because my my family is is from Spain and Croatia, uh, and then I Patagonia, the town I'm from, is right at the bottom of um, is Punta Arenas, which is at the bottom of the cone, right at the tip. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a s- uh, stone throw away from Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, wow. wow! It's really it's parallel fifty two, fifty three, mm-hmm. which would be you know we're forty seven, so it would be somewhere. So it'd be up in Canada, of Canada you, yeah. Somewhere. But because there's so much water down there, the temperatures aren't as bad mm-hmm. as middle of Canada. Mm-hmm. So and then before the Panama Canal was built, um, every ship had to go through the Strait of Magellan. Right. And then this town was right at the Strait of Magellan. So. Uh, European immigration was heavy uh, mm-hmm. uh, at some point, and it had that town has been dying ever since the canal was built. Oh, sure. Uh, because there's no reason to go down there anymore. No. They just <clears throat> cut across. So, hmm. the, uh, uh, Croatian uh, culture, or I guess immigration, was uh, pretty strong, and um, my, you know. My great grandfather was Spanish, and my mm-hmm. great grandparents were Croatian. So I'm third generation, wow. and uh, unfortunately, I don't speak Croatian. Um, maybe my kids will say that about Spanish. <laughs> yeah, they, right. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they'll they speak Croatian. Job. My dad did a bad job. <laughs> uh, so, so somehow, you know, we're you know, I don't know. In the family, we we've, we've always migrated, and mm-hmm. uh, before that. I mean, we're, we're, we're from the Adriatic. And then when I met my wife, this is a, is a funny story because I met her in London. And uh, I, when, I, when I realized that she was from Chile or her mom was from Chile, uh, she's, she's from, she was born in Arizona. Uh, her dad's English. That's why she was living in England. Uh, and then um, I was like, oh, yeah, where from? You know, where's your mom from? He said, oh, Punta Arenas in, in Patagonia. I was like, oh, yeah, me too. And I was like, oh, cool. And, was, well, and then immediately, you know, the families is like, oh, what's, what's the last name? And right. Where, yeah. You know, which part and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so we found out, you know, her mom also... Uh, Croatian descent and our, oh, wow. our grandparents knew each other oh, when they were little God. and then we, we did an ancestry trip to Brač an island in front of Split in Croatia and our families were within like 20 
minute drive from one another. Oh my God, that's so weird. <laughs> that is so they crazy. were joking to us saying like, you know, you, you should be careful because, you know, maybe it's, you know, <laughs> right? uh, it's a little too close here. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't do it 23 and me. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so I don't know, you know, yeah. That's, a, wow. Wow. So, so your kids. So we feel like, you know, and then, you know, my, my from my wife's side, or her mom is from Chile, her dad's from England. They've traveled a lot as well. We've traveled a lot, and we met in London. We've always traveled. So it, it somehow there was this traveling culture in our family um, going way back when. So mm-hmm. we love traveling. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, you know, COVID kind of put a put a halt on it. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we haven't gone anywhere other than the States for some time, but mm-hmm. we're hoping... We're hoping that we'll we'll be heading down to Chile next next year. Oh, nice, nice. nice. Well, yeah. I'm starting to think to you know travel. I love travel. I love going to Europe. I would love to go to Thank Southeast you. Asia. You. We went to Australia once, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. Go there. There's so many places around the world I'd love to go. And then I remember that the United States. We're a huge country, and there are a lot of really cool mm-hmm. places to visit right here too. Mm-hmm. And I. I tend to kind of discount that for right. some reason, but um, I'm starting to think that maybe maybe we should do some exploring, more exploring in the United States yeah, a little yeah. bit. There's Yeah, and we, we've done that a lot, um, mm-hmm. especially during COVID. We, we hit the road quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for me, you know, it's... It's, it's a new country. Yeah. You know, I Lots came, yeah, I came sure. when I was 27, so there's a lot that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, different history here. Yeah. For sure. yeah. And I feel it's pretty cool when I'm driving across the country. It's, it's, it's something, it's a point of pride for me because mm-hmm. growing up in Chile and hearing about the States and watching cowboy movies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty cool. A different perspective. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Yeah. I know. Well, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your experiences with us. It's Absolutely. Been, well, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. It's thanks been lovely for having all you. your input on Kids Draw and uh-huh. being on our board and yeah. making our town beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love this town. Yeah. I love Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm. Um, we're very excited to live here and be part of the community. It's uh it's a great, it's a great place to live and raise a family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully, is. I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, I'll, I'll have some art at some point. We would yeah. love to see that. I know yeah. that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, and and we'll be at your housewarming. Yes, there you go. I know. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully that go. comes around sooner than yeah. later mm-hmm. for yeah, you. It's particularly. supposed to be finished in March. Oh, nice. Woo. Yeah, so so hopefully... So you know, hopefully a, by July. That's right. yeah. I always... Well, I, yeah. told, I told my contractor, I'm moving in in March. Well, there yeah. you go. There's nothing. Whether, whether you like it or, or not. not. <laughs> no, oh, man. boy. Yeah. Oh. Certificate of occupancy. Yeah, those are right. those magical words. You're that's like, right. that's finally. Right. Oh. Well, we're thrilled to have you on the board of yes. the Arts and Culture Thank Alliance. you so yeah. much, Rod. It's great to have you and your whole mm. family and... Thanks Thank so you. much. Yeah. yeah. Love yeah. hearing about it. Love hearing your stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wanna... Maybe after a few drinks, I have a few more. But... All right. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All of our stories well, get better. Right. What's your favorite drink? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Maybe we should go to lunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Man. oh. All right. Well, All righty. Well, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie. And whatever you do today, make sure it's creative. The Alley and Kelly Artcast is a program of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and is sponsored by NIA, North Idaho Alliance, a woman-based leadership organization designed to inspire, uplift, and impact your community and lives. And Tubbs Coffee Roasters, globally sourced, locally roasted coffee.